Here we are now in Akihabara, aka Electric City in Japan, and they also call this place Akiba as well. And this is essentially, if you like computers, cameras, or anything electronic, then this is known as the place to go to to look for electronics in person. So what we're gonna be doing today is going through a few stores and looking for used PC enthusiast tech hardware. Since that is what I do around here at Tech Air City, I love it. And this place honestly is just a Christmas shopping center if you guys wanna go shopping at least just for eye candy and looking around and seeing all different devices and gadgets. However, there's also a really good thing too, and that is if you are a tourist, you can get 10% off the prices here at a lot of different stores. All you have to do is show your passport, and just if you don't speak much Japanese, you can just say, do you do tax off? Or if they don't understand English at all, then you can just say, menze dekimasuka, and then they'll say hai, which means yes, or they'll say ie or moshi waki gozaimasen, which means no. Anyhow, with that aside, let's go through a few different stores, see what bargains are to be had here, as well as just detailing a few different things along the way, but I unfortunately don't have a whole lot of time as I've got to go to an event in another district in Tokyo to film for a company called Corsair. They want me to film their event. They got a new product launching. So we're gonna be uh, looking at that a little bit later, but I do have to keep this as kind of like a compact parts hunt. But let's get into it. Let's see what deals we can find. So we looked through a few different stores and we're looking for mainly PC parts, but eventually you'll come into a store that has some used bargains. And the first store we ended up getting out of was called Jampada, which uh, means actually, I don't know, because it's just Japanese for a store name. So <laughs> inside they had a GTX 580 and they were asking 2,980 yen, which would be around maybe 25 US dollars off the top of my head. They said they gave a one week warranty as well. So I was like, look, I'll go buy this and you also get a $2 discount if I use my passport to get 10% off. But at the register, they said um, they can only do the tax off if you're paying 5,000 yen or more, or basically 40, 40, basically 40 USD or more per item. If it's under that, they won't do the tax off. And I think they said as well, also, if you're buying bundled parts, as long as the total at the one purchase is over that 5,000 yen, then you can get the tax off. Anyhow, when I was at the counter, there was some really good news, and that is that they said they mispriced the GTX 580, and they did it for me for 1,980 yen. So I actually got a pretty big discount on this item. So for, I mean, for a GTX 580, it's an old graphics card, but it should still play games. I'm actually very curious to see what this card can do in 2022. However, let's keep on looking around and see what other deals we can find. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. So the next store that we ended up just coming out of was a place called Skumo, and they had some really good deals. I actually ended up buying uh, three different items from this store alone, where I was actually looking at the fact that I wanted to buy more graphics cards from here, because the prices were pretty decent. For instance, they had GTX 1080s going for around 240 US dollars, maybe a little bit less or around 30,000 yen. But what caught my eyes, probably the best bargain was the GTX 980 Ti. They had this for around 150 US dollars, which made it a pretty good deal for a 980 Ti, which will still play games very well on high settings, especially at 1080p. So we definitely put that in the kitty and we said, okay, we're gonna get this graphics card. But then the next deal they had there was the i7 4770K. They actually had this on a sale and it was going for 6,000 yen, but I managed to get the tax off on both the graphics card and this item, and it ended up being, I think, 40 US dollars. So really good deal on a 4770K. Then they also had raised prism coolers, and there's basically, they're saying they're junk, 
but they're selling them as junk, but they look like they're brand new to me. So I decided to buy one of these and try them out, especially when you get a raised prism for a shade over 20 US dollars. That's definitely a bargain in my opinion. So those are the three items we picked up from Skumo. And there's actually a few different Skumos in uh, Akihabara. But what you wanna do is if you're looking for the one with the used parts, it'll say on the outside, uh, Chuko, and I'll put the kanji up on the screen for you guys. I'll actually show you the store in the B-roll if you're looking for used PC parts in Tokyo, Akihabara, and then you can go to this store and get a really good deal. So after looking high and low at a few different stores, we came across a soft map, which is similar to Skumo in that there's actually a few different uh, soft maps in Akihabara alone. But the one you're looking for, of course, is the one that says used parts or used computer parts. And they actually even say this one in English. So it's very easy to navigate to this store. And once you're on the uh, second floor, They'll have a heap of different parts to choose from. I managed to, while I was in here, to find a two different motherboards, actually. A B550 Tough Gaming from Asus. This was a shade over 50 US dollars. And then they also had a Z68 motherboard. And we picked this up as well for uh, around about 35 US dollars. So we took the tax off both of these as well. So ended up getting a bargain on two motherboards. They had a lot of other used parts but I thought the prices weren't that good on some of the other stuff. And of course, they also had a lot of new parts where you can get the tax off those new parts as well if you're uh, looking to build a new PC, especially if you're in a certain country in the world where there's a lot of taxes on PC parts and the prices are ridiculous. And especially if you're coming to Japan for a short period of time as a holiday, you can definitely take advantage of some of the decent prices. But as for the graphics card prices, they are coming down. I did see some RX 6700 XTs coming in at prices that I haven't seen before. But I do believe, especially with the recent crashing of cryptocurrencies, that you will see GPU prices come down further. So I'm getting pretty excited here, but I've actually got to rush off now to this event and film this event for Corsair. So uh, we better get moving. And now we are here back at the Japan Tech Yes Studio. And these are the deals from Tokyo with me just looking there for only just a couple of hours. And if you contrast that to the last parts hunt I did in Japan, where I was looking around more the countryside, this has just been a lot easier. So I do recommend if you wanna look for used parts and you don't want too much of a hassle, then Tokyo itself is definitely a lot better to look for used PC parts than in the country, which is just funny how bad it's gotten over the years in that when I first started doing used PC parts years and years ago, the country was where all the deals were at. Anyhow, we've got all these parts laid out here. They all look like they're actually really good quality. And I was surprised as well, because the B550, I thought they said it didn't come with an IO shield, but it actually did. So the only thing missing from this B550 tough is the standard brackets, but I'm gonna look for a cooler for that with the back plate included and that'll fix that problem altogether. But what we've got right now is me wanting to piece out a, a gaming PC. And I've got the 980 Ti and the 4770K, and they'll go together perfectly, in my opinion. So I'll still need a cooler, a motherboard, DDR3 memory, a case, and an SSD. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take off to the local store where I believe I saw a, a case, a 4000D last month. So I might go try and pick that up and maybe see if they've got an SSD or even some DDR3 memory, if not, will then go look on the Mailcuddy and Yahoo auctions to try and find some more pieces for the puzzle to finish off a gaming PC and also finish off this used PC parts hunt.
So we now just finished up at the hard off and we actually before that went to Wonderx as well to check out if they have anything back in stock but they had absolutely nothing but then this hard off here looked like they got some more things in stock since the last time I came here however I really only found a case so we got the MB400L and we got this for 4,000 yen and the good thing about this was they give a 10 day guarantee and besides that was the 4000D but I decided not to go with that because they said it was junk and basically when you're saying it's junk you cannot get your money back and you're probably thinking well Brian it's okay surely there's nothing wrong with it but you can sometimes have problems say for instance a power switch or reset switch isn't working and if you're buying a case that's really nice you don't want it to have any problems you know especially if you're going to flip that pc you don't want to have to tell the person who's buying it hey look uh you know just use the reset switch instead of the power switch to turn on your computer they're just going to scratch their head i mean if it's a real budget pc like a hundred dollars sure they might not care but when you're going for something a little bit more i7 ish gtx 980 ti it's probably a better idea to get a case that's got some guarantee on it which this one does the 10 uh 10 day guarantee but also another thing is too i decided to go with the small case in the end another big thing that i haven't really maybe spoke about in the past was that if you're using say uh, some of those used power supplies say the deltas or the fsps sometimes their cpu connectors don't go in a uh, mid-sized tower they're actually more suited to these uh, micro atx towers in that all the cables will also fit flush and you won't have any problems. So those two reasons coupled with the fact that we also saved 15 bucks made the Cooler Master seem like the better choice. But do let us know in the comments section below what you think of the tech yes thinking. And with that aside, we are gonna get on back home now and piece out the rest of these parts by looking on either the Yahoo Auctions or Mercuddy for the uh, SSD and also the RAM and also the power supply. And the cooler as well can't forget the cooler but also i did check coolers here too and they only had lga 775 at least one that was in good condition and yeah i can't can't do anything with this cooler because even if i drill new holes in the bracket the uh, actual screws themselves on the cooler won't budge at all so and yeah again we're not zip tying this one fellas And here we are now back for the second round at Tech yes City. We got that case that's now ready to go with a build and checking it out, it looks like it's in perfect condition, but I still wanted to get some more parts to piece out a build essentially for you guys with a budget build. So what we did here is we went on the Yahoo auctions and I had to pull up an old account. I had to resurrect my old Yahoo auctions account. And there's a big reason for that. And that is because I have, um, quite a bit of feedback on it. I've got over 200 points feedback. Just like eBay, it works in a very similar manner. But the problem is if you've got no feedback and you make a new account for Yahoo Auctions in Japan, some sellers actually won't sell to you at all. And especially in tech products, that can be a bit of a pain, especially if you see a really good deal come up, then you definitely wanna have the ability to just buy that deal with no hassles. And so I resurrected that account, got it working again, and I found some pretty good deals. In the last part time, people recommended I go onto the Yahoo auctions as there's better deals than Merikuddy. And Merikuddy is essentially an auction site as well that we used in the last parts hunt that we did here in Japan. And we found some pretty decent deals. But Yahoo auction definitely had, in my opinion, a bit more to choose from, a bit better deals. And we'll start off with the first deal that we got here. And that was a motherboard. It was an H81 Gigabyte HD3. And we got this for about 20 US dollars and that's delivered as well. And they've confirmed that the board works. They said it's okay. And so that's a pretty good deal in my opinion. Now you're probably thinking, Brad, this motherboard is not gonna handle a 4770K. And I've actually tested this in the past. If you undervolt the 4770K, it'll actually work absolutely fine. And especially for $20, that's an absolute bargain for a motherboard delivered. The next deal we ended up getting was 1900 yen for a power supply, 500 watts now, these are usually you can get really good deals on these from either Delta or FSP. Both these brands make phenomenal power supplies. And if you get them used, you can save a lot of money. In the past, I've tested out so many and actually bought so many of these power supplies and they're absolute bargains in my opinion. The only one I've had fail on me was the one, it didn't really fail. It just started getting like 
just over time, just wear and tear, it essentially after I think four or five years of usage, it then broke, uh, essentially the voltage rail, I think it was on the five volt, started giving out. So that's how much usage you can get out of them. And that was even after I bought it used where the previous owner probably used it years before that. So they last a very long time, very good price performance in my opinion. And then the next deal we got on the Yahoo auctions was the last deal as well, but this wasn't so much a deal and it's actually, as well as I do these parts hunts for you guys, it's more of a learning curve that I'm going through, uh, getting back into Japan and testing out the market, especially seeing the differences between Australia and Japan. What I noticed here was that memory DDR3 and even DDR4, it's actually a bit more expensive than it is in Australia and the US, uh, especially on the used market. So we ended up getting 16 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. This is the cheapest I could find uh, delivered and that was about $36. So I am used to getting DDR3 memory a lot cheaper. So if anything, it's something for me to think about, uh, especially with the other sort of deals that we're looking for here on SSDs where we went to Amazon for the next uh, few parts to piece out the rest of the build. And that was for a 240 gigabyte SSD. We got this for $26.30 delivered. That's brand new because the used market for SSDs, I actually should have bought one in Tokyo with the tax off because that would have been a better deal than all the online deals for Yahoo Auctions and Merrill Cuddy, as well as Amazon. So that was kind of a mistake that I made there, but I didn't have enough time to research that and think while I was in Tokyo. And then the other uh, sort of deal that we got off Amazon here was a brand new CPU cooler. We got this for just under $10 delivered. That's gonna be coming in and it works fine up till 95 watt TDP. That's what the people are saying in the reviews. So that's not a bad option there, especially since we'll be undervolting this 4770K, getting the most out of it. Then for our motherboard, since that B550 Tough Gaming was only missing the bracket, we ordered a brand new bracket for it with the screws for $3.40 delivered. That's absolutely incredible. Like Amazon here in Japan can pull off some really good prices and especially the convenience of getting it delivered at that price. I'm just like, well, how do they make any money on this stuff? That leaves me scratching my head sometimes. So that now ended up being the total deals for the month here. I'll put the tally up on the screen for you where it came in at about 460 US dollars for all these parts and in this whole deals hunt, we've actually got a whole 980 Ti 4770K PC that is going to be built with a decent looking case for around about $350 US. So that's gonna be actually one price performance PC that I look forward to giving you guys. I think it's gonna be absolutely awesome. So definitely building budget PCs is coming back into play, especially while that crypto mining profitability just keeps sinking. It's sinking off a cliff to the point where the miners, especially the ones that don't produce their own power, are pretty much gonna have to switch off the lights, so to speak, very soon. So do look forward to graphics card prices coming down more, which will sort of reinvigorate and rejuvenate the life that had been sucked out of PC gaming, I think in the last couple of years. I'm looking forward to being on the front lines, giving you guys that energy and that content as soon as it comes back in. But this 980 Ti PC here, I feel will represent one of those rejuvenating factors to come back into the industry. But with that aside, do let us know in the comments section below, what was your favorite deal of the month? For me personally, I'm looking over this GTX 580, I think for around $15, that's an absolute bargain. And also that B550 Tough Plus Gaming motherboard. It's a pretty decent quality motherboard and for $50, I think you can't go wrong. And then that Wraith Prism, I'm just thinking maybe I should go back to Tokyo and buy up the rest of those coolers because I thought they were pretty good value as well. At least when I check on the local markets in Australia, I remember these people asking and actually getting at least over $50 for these Wraith Prism coolers individually. So I think at around uh, the price that we paid here in USD terms, which is about $21, I think that's a pretty good deal. Though the final thing to talk about is the SSDs and the memory, especially the DDR3 memory. I'm noticing the prices on the used market here for DDR3 memory SSDs, it's not good, especially compared to Australia and possibly even compared to the US, at least when I compare prices with my friends in the US. I would say that going forward, if I'm flipping PCs and it becomes a seamless and pretty much even if it's anything near as successful as it was in Australia, then I'll be looking at bulk buying uh, SSDs and memory, especially DDR3 memory, whether it's from contacts in Australia or even getting uh, a contact in 
over in China getting the stuff brand new because the prices here, I'm not really happy with DDR3 pricing or the SSD pricing, especially on the used market, as opposed to the, I'm buying the SSDs new because they're better value buying them new than used, which is very weird. So that is the biggest difference I'm noticing between the Japanese market and the Australian market right now. And do let us know in the comments section below what your market is like. Also let us know again, what your favorite deal of the month is. Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which is actually a very interesting one. It comes from Beast of Burden. And they asked, did the newest Windows update increase the performance hit from Spectre? In other words, did it lower the performance of your older generation CPUs that got hit by this patch with the Spectre Meltdown updates? They say, I noticed lower performance, specifically maximum FPS seems restricted. Even lowering quality settings doesn't increase max FPS. So I thought CPU bottleneck, but was told even newer i9 users are having similar issues. Well, if you guys want, I can look into the Spectre and Meltdown updates again for you and do some more benchmarks. When these patches first came out, I was very skeptical of them. I thought like the back of my mind, I was thinking, is this perhaps a ploy to make the older stuff just completely seem obsolete when it actually isn't obsolete and it still works perfectly fine so they can sell the newer stuff off. That was one of those things that went in the back of my mind and seeing the performance hits and now hearing about the uh, increased performance hits makes me want to go back and test again and seeing how much more performance you could possibly lose from having these updates enabled as opposed to disabling them, which in the past when we tested the Spectre and Meltdown updates, they did hit performance and turning them off gave you better FPS, especially on the older generation stuff. So since we do have the i7-3770 right here at the studio, we've also got a 12900K in our editing rig, I can maybe make a video happen like that and test the differences between the two and see what is going on there. Where actually in the recent benchmarks I have been doing with the 3770, I have been disabling those updates. I just do it by default on anything fourth gen and under. It's like an automatic thing for me because I know it used to hit performance five to 10% depending on the game. That's a huge drawdown for something that hasn't materialized in the real world to being an actual security risk for end user gamers. Anyhow guys, with that aside, I hope you've stayed this far and you've enjoyed today's used PC parts hunt in Japan. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. Also, if you have stayed this far and you wanna see the content as soon as it drops, be sure to hit that sub button and make sure you ring the bell as well if you wanna get the videos definitely in your feed as I do get messages from people who are saying, look, Brian, I'm just not getting the videos at all. So <laughs> YouTube seems to do some funny buggers to Tech Yes City. So that's just been the way it has been for years. But anyway, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.